Welcome, welcome. Goodness, a couple of weeks off and everything goes to pot. Um, so I hope everyone had a fantastic uh, school holiday. Um, I know Sen and I did. Um, I've done some fun stuff. I have been working as well. And in fact, Rosabella is doing a beautiful picture beside me here. Um, so I'm really, really thrilled to have Sen Wharton um, on here with us. And Wow, I can't wait for this, actually. I've been really looking forward to having Sen on here. He is an absolutely awesome human being in every single way. Um, and yeah, I, I can't describe how amazing he is. And today we're going to be talking about masterminding. And interestingly, that is exactly how I met Sen. I met him because he was mentoring me on a masterminding table. Um, I then... Um, uh, eventually became a, a mentor with him and then um, he started doing mastermind retreats um, which again I attended uh, one of those and it was yeah literally life-changing um, so yeah cannot wait to to chat a little bit further but first up Sen please please just um, a quick introduction of yourself um, your property journey where you're at and then we'll we'll deep dive into the masterminding stuff um, once you've introduced yourself wow well thank you for the wonderful intro and for having me here it's an honor and a pleasure to be with you live in your clubhouse emma um having seen what you've achieved in the last few short years has just been phenomenal and absolutely just a, a joy to observe and uh to be a friend of yours as well so by way of quick intro i am um, someone who is a product i guess of personal development and education an application of that and that has taken me from an employee to uh, an entrepreneur and it started with like for many it does with a with a, a book a uh, light bulb moment a switch going on from reading something which is rich dad poor dad and that was in my early 20s and i just thought i need to get into property and get going with it. So I did at about age 26 and just very, very gradually built up a portfolio that allowed me to leave employment after about eight years of having a career in recruitment and headhunting. And then we go into the next stage of seeking out support, mentoring, guidance, advice. I'd hit a bit of a ceiling doing what I was doing and I discovered service accommodation. I partnered with a brilliant guy I'd met from the construction industry who was working my house. Everyone knows Chris Thornton, or if they don't, he's my business partner. And together we've formed a number of businesses since 2015, 16. And service accommodation has really been the main one. That's our cash flow business. It's started out being a, a bit of a, a failure, a lot of expensive mistakes, but we learned a huge amount reset, started again, and made a great success in service accommodation. And with that business being run by two really great property managers, Chris and I focus our time on building out the assets in our portfolio through development and acquisition, and also through mentoring and masterminding, which is what we love doing. So there's a bit of an intro to myself and Chris by default. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love that. Okay, so yeah, the reason that we um, we were sort of thinking, weren't we? What what could we talk about today? And I knew for me that the one I really wanted to talk about with you was this whole kind of masterminding. Um, that's as I, I've already mentioned. That's how we 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 met and how I first came together. Oh, that's beautiful, darling. Um, so I wanted to kind of come back to, I suppose. I'd already been masterminding, so I'd been masterminding with you. And then having met you, that's when I started really what I would call my proper mindset journey and really understanding my, myself. And I was introduced to a book called You Squared. So you as in Y-O-U and a little number two, um, as in like two squared is four, that kind of thing, by a chap called Price Pritchard. And this is where I really started to kind of understand this this different way of thinking as far as mastermind and what he does in that as right at the beginning he describes this fly 
that, it, it, you know, and he's, he's talking about this life or death situation. And we've all seen it, haven't we? A little fly trying to fly through a window. And let's be fair, you know, he, he's trying really hard and he keeps trying and he keeps trying and he keeps trying. And he's basically trying so hard that he's willing to die. And that's what they do often, don't they? And then they die. And all he had to do is look, you know, half a metre to the left and there's an open door or an open window. So all you have to do is just change slightly what you're doing, fly along there and he could have flown and got away. And it's all about that thing where we often feel, don't we, if we try just a little bit harder, we'll get there. But if you look at it from the, the point of the fly, actually trying harder is not always the way. Because if we're doing something in the wrong way, it might be wrong. And that's where it comes to um, where we have expectations, don't we, of growing, let's say, 5% or 10%. But to grow like 200%, well, most people are like, oh, that's too much. And it's all about kind of doing, we're, we're taught that, you know, you do certain things, but actually it's not about doing certain things. Being really successful is doing things in a certain way. And that's where I really feel that the power of masterminding. So if there's just one of us, so like just just you, Sen, whenever we sit, we have, we've had many breakfasts, haven't we? Um, with uh, all our sort of uh, mentor friends. And we sit there and we all chat. And by the end of a half an hour breakfast, all of us have come away, like compounded the information that we've got or the ideas that we've generated. And that's what I've seen, you know, so powerfully. So yeah, that's, that, that's kind of my huge thing that I, I really learned um, the, the difference there. So I'd love to hear, you know, how you started to, to get into masterminding um, and how it's sort of, I suppose, helped in your journey. Yeah. What, what, what a, yeah, vivid, metaphor analogy to i guess open up the discussion and share that that the the frustration of the fly it's similar to the property entrepreneur investor who's so hungry to want to be successful and the pain thing i know you and i and many other mentors have seen is that sadly so many property investor entrepreneurs are doing they're wasting so much time, energy, effort, resource, doing the wrong things and not even realizing it. And it's, and it's sad to see. And this is where we can help identify where is that gap in the window, half a meter long, and nurture and guide and, and, and help them through. Because the thing that we have all come from and through is starting somewhere with some education of some sort. And the thing that we've realized and noticed is that courses and knowledge and books, that's one thing, but execution is everything. And it's how we transition from sitting on knowing some knowledge in our heads and actually executing it. And when I refer to there being so many things that all of us, you and I included, people ahead of us include things that we do that are wrong and wasting time and energy and effort and resource and not even knowing it so much of that is stifling our ability to hit our goals as quickly and easily and as uh, stress-free as possible and this is where mastermind really comes into its own so to circle back to where did it start from for me it was education in the realm of starting a business it was an entrepreneur's um, course, if you will, a program called the Foundation. I don't know if it still exists. And two of the mentors I had in that that were teaching us to start a software business had started to build international masterminds because we were all around the world from South America to UK to US, but we were put into small mastermind groups online to help with our weekly progress. And... I just found it transformational to be, for the first time, not isolated and alone, to be with people who are on a similar journey and start sharing and talking about hurdles and pitfalls, but then share and celebrate wins. Because the whole thing's a massive roller coaster, isn't it? it? It's a mental, emotional, psychological roller coaster trying to figure stuff out on one's own. And I could relate that back to. So I'm sharing with you as an experience I went through in 2014, 15. 
trying to build a software business, but having the benefit of a mastermind group, even though it was virtual at the time, because I could compare it to my first eight, 10 years in property, which was me on my lonesome trying to apply what I was reading in books and things that I'd learned on a foundational course I did in 2008, 2007, 8. And I'd go down to this course in London. I'd fly back up to Scotland. I was on my own, not speaking to anybody, just trying to apply it with brute force. Um, so I realized in 2014 this power of being able to be on a journey with others and discuss things. And if there's someone there to guide the way, and if there's someone who's been and done what you want to achieve, that you can ask some questions of and, and follow and apply, it just transforms it and makes it all different. Um, did that answer the initial question, or would you like me to go on more about? So that's where it started from for me. That's the very beginnings. Um, yeah. I haven't even talked about property masterminding yet. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think just sort of covering off those bases. So you really, yeah, covered off. It is, isn't it? That when we, when we're just doing it on our own, that's, that's one thing, isn't it? So it's, it's basically just one head. You, you don't necessarily know what you don't know. Um, and gosh, that's been huge for me. I couldn't, you know, even now I know there's so much that I don't know. I don't know because you know but how, how can we? And that that was a huge learning curve. Um, then if you had, you know, if it was just you and I like now. So if there's just like the two of us, it's fantastic. And I and I think definitely two two people together is, is really amazing. But there is something about having two or more um, that can be so so powerful, isn't it? Because so many people have differing um knowledge so i mean i know mostly i've been in 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 property masterminds but i do have a, a business mastermind as well and it never ceases to amaze me you know the experience or just something that somebody mentions that they're doing in a business that's completely nothing to do with property is so relevant to me and i wouldn't have thought about that and i suppose an example of that is when i used to work for um l'oreal <laughs> and I thought I joined L'Oreal and I thought it would be really glamorous. I was like, oh, yes, I'm going to join Longcom and it's going to be wonderful. Anyway, I was putting Garnier Maybelline, the most basic, you know, that there was. But where they went to get their inspiration, which I found really interesting, was to grocery stores. So we used to go and spend a lot of time going around Tesco's, you know, Morrison's, all of those things, because they were so creative in their thinking. And we'd all sit down together and just throw ideas in. And we were always told, you know, no idea is a silly idea. And, you know, there's some crazy ideas that come out. And that, to, to me, is this real difference between having sort of one person and this kind of multitude of people. It's not just, uh, you know, one thing. And I and I also just wanted to reiterate on, on what you said, is you, you talked about having knowledge and also execution, and um, and in, in fact, yeah, I yeah, we call that because I, I I'm with the, you know, I, I love following Bob Proctor and things like that, and he calls that the knowing doing gap. Because don't we? I mean, how many books have we read? How many things do we know? We know, don't we? We know yeah. it, and we've often heard it multiple times, but it's whether we do it. And as you said, sort of these these mastermind groups can help you whether it's sort of accountability i think there's just so many levels of a of a mastermind that that i mean just talking through it now I'm, i've got less more ideas sort of coming into my head about how how sort of different it truly is and how incredibly powerful it is it, this is the way i to speak to your points nice way to capture it, the knowing doing gap because if people really observe success stories on Facebook or in communities and think, well, what's the difference between those people out there who are getting big results in property and those of us who aren't? What's the difference between consistent year-on-year -year growth or stagnation or actual decline? And it really does come down to consistent execution of the right things. And what I've found, and I know what you've found over the last five years is the power of a mastermind group to help bridge that knowing doing gap and 
I've been looking at this and studying this for quite a while now, and what's really come clear through reading and studying and observing other people far, far ahead of us who are and have been part of masterminds and talking about this for a long, long time, and I feel like I kind of live and breathe this a lot right now, is that there are a number of clear problems in my mind that's holding people back from this knowing, doing gap and actually executing. And people, this is what I was pointing to, people don't often realize. This is things like lack of clarity in what actually is it that they really want, what they're striving for and why they want that. And lack of alignment, actual alignment with who they are, their values, the way they want to do things, what they want to do. Inability to make decisions. That's huge. I think you touched on it earlier about trouble making decisions on one's own. A lack of focus and lack of consistent execution. These are all problems inherent in people that you and I have worked with over the years and that we've experienced ourselves. And what I've come to realize, Emma, is that the solution to all that is human connection. It might sound strange in the first instance, but I don't just mean any kind of human connection. Uh, human connection of the right, of the like-minded on the same journey, because I read this from, I'm going to quote Darren Hardy here, if I remember roughly, he talked about transformation, this journey from who we are now to who we want to become. And he talked about the journey being this epic year-on-year journey. And the biggest influence on that journey is who you choose to journey with. It's the who. And so to bring that into the context of a mastermind group, what I was getting at as to why and how human connection is the solution is because the right group of people around someone who's hungry and striving to want to apply and grow literally solves all those problems. So this clarity piece, clarity is a byproduct of having someone explain themselves and be understood to their peer group and have their ideas challenged or validated to help them arrive at a level of certainty and therefore decision. And um, you know, we, we, we talked about this batting ideas around the room, having it challenged, validated, having new ideas layered on. It brings this level of clarity and ability to make decisions so that when the individual who is explaining themselves is kind of forcing themselves to specify what their plans are, when they describe it and talk it through to their peer group and to a mentor guiding it, they're then baking in this layer of accountability to declare publicly, this is what I'm going to do. And so they're pulling on all of these optimal psychological conditions to get the very best out of themselves. The way I see mastermind groups now, it's like having your own private board of advisors whose sole job is to sit in your corner and help you stay focused and productive month on month, week on week. That's where the magic of it comes from. That's where you're able to bridge this gap from knowing and doing. It's it's a tribal thing. We're a tribal species. We want to belong to a group who is growing and going somewhere. And because we are part of that like-minded group, we're able to actually step up and level up and match the expectations of this high-achieving peer group. That, that's what the Pygmalion effect is. You heard the Pygmalion effect before? Yeah, I think we've discussed it before. It's, it's like this rising tide that uh, raises all, all, all ships, that when you're in a group who have high expectations of one another, you are inclined to step up and meet those high expectations and vice versa, hold high expectations of your peer group. So it's this reinforcing cycle, but it only happens with the right kind of human connections. And that's what I know you and I love doing. We love creating it, curating it, and working with great people to make that transformation, that journey year over year. It's it is powerful. It's incredibly powerful. It's, it's magical, if you will. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I, I love absolutely. Uh, and I, lo- I love the way, um, especially, c- c- you know, having conversations with you because you see things quite, not differently, but it is differently. You know, there, there are ways that you see things sort of differently and it's it's really powerful. So certainly we, we talked about, you know, how this can be really inspirational Uh, Obviously, you can have sort of accountability, um, you you know, exactly as you said, um, you know, it can be, um, what is it, the the average 
five people that you spend most time with, you're going to earn what the average of all of them earn kind of thing. So it's, um, and and I think that's incredibly powerful. But one of the things I've been learning about recently that has been really powerful as well is to also kind of have faith. So like you and I have been in, in mastermind groups and and we've led mastermind groups and we've been in mastermind groups, so to speak. And you'll have some people that, uh, are clearly a bit closed to this opportunity. And I think it's really key that, that when you're coming into an opportunity is is to one, be open, but to two, but two to have, if, if you've chosen a group of people and you know that there's people in there that, you know, have abilities, to have faith that that group of people will help and support you find your journey uh, or find the, the the route or find the solution or whatever it might be. But what I've really seen and something that I really have to, to learn to do is to rather than me, for, for instance, looking at you and saying, oh, Sen, Sen's got, you know, all these essay units and I haven't got as many and I'm this and I'm that. And, 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 and starting on a very competitive level, is um so I'm reading the, the oh, oh I say I'm reading I, I read it over and over the science of getting rich by Wallace D Wattle, and he talks a lot about being creative. So you be in your own creativity. So create your own world. I suppose don't compete against everyone else. So it's the kind of thing where I look at you and just go, wow, look at what Sen's done. He's got all of these things. What can I learn from him? How does he behave? Oh, he does that. I really like that. I'd like to do that. He does that. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe I won't. But you don't see it in a good or, or bad way. It's it's not a competitive way. You look at what you can take from these situations um, and taking it from there. And that, that's been a really interesting one for me because I definitely have come from a point of competition. I also have come from a, a position of being a bit jealous and thinking, oh, why haven't I got that? And having these kind of, uh, you know, roles and actually understanding how to make the most of a mastermind, I think is also really key because, um, and, and we will come on to how you got into, you know, starting masterminds and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that I don't know if you you kind of seen that when you have people coming in and they're closed, yeah. aren't they? Whereas to me, that's been a huge learning, kind of having faith in those people that you've chosen to be with, because generally you have via some kind of vibrational thing have attracted these people and even when you then go in and you're thinking oh they've done this that and the other that's competitive and now I'm really looking at it di differently and just saying right what are all these positives what can I see from there what are the things that I can take from there so that you create your own rather than living in that kind of a bit of negativity there's there's two things that stood out for me that or spun to mind when I was hearing you talk about the thoughts that might pass through someone's mind when they're either thinking about joining a mass point or they've just joined one, they've stepped into one, they're to go through this compare and contrasting. It's just a, a natural default setting that we will all do. But as you've realized, you come to see things and reframe it differently. So yes, be competitive and be inspired by those who are seemingly achieving things that you haven't yet. But there's a really key thing that I hope everyone listening to, to this live or to a recording takes away that comparison is a, is a dangerous game. The best comparison we must be thinking about is with ourselves a week ago, a month ago, a year ago. And I, I heard the, um, I guess, the analogy put by, uh, it was... I forget what's the guy's name. He was a former Southwestern guy, wrote the book, Take the Stairs. No, maybe it wasn't him. It was maybe a Darren Hardy one. But the analogy was about everyone's on their own respective staircases, their own journeys. And we cannot compare our staircase to someone else's. We can use looking at theirs to inspire us to take action and move faster. But we, it's dangerous to compare our staircase because we don't know where they started. We don't know what help they've had along their way. We don't know if they're on an escalator rather than the staircase. <laughs> and so dangerous to compare one to another. The other thing that came up in my mind was, again, reframing, looking at 
these gaps, the knowledge, the experience, the accomplishments, when in a peer group, when in a, a mass mind group, and instead of seeing it through a, a damaging light of, I'm so far behind, I'm frustrated, I'm angry with myself, I'm disappointed, I'm disheartened. Instead, a hugely powerful thing with mass mind groups is being able to recognize knowledge gaps, experience gaps, deficiencies, power team gaps, much, much faster when we're in amongst a group that are high performing. And by identifying that, we're able to go and rectify and do something about it very, very quickly. So it's a real benefit and an accelerator rather than looking at, oh my God, I don't have this in place. It's like, brilliant. I've spotted that. I would never have seen that gap in my trajectory or in my business systems, in my power team, had I not been in amongst this group. So great. Now I can go and ask you questions and find out how to plug that gap extra fast so the way we can look at it from every angle is win 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 benefit then benefit rather than the dangerous light of i'm not there i'm not worthy i'm putting one myself down etc it's um yeah a very important reframe for everyone who's going on this growth journey yeah amazing amazing okay so let's sort of jump in to you yeah. know where you started as far as you know becoming obviously you're extremely experienced in 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 property and you basically uh you, you know were one of the ones who 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 started my journey i think you would have been one of my very first mentors um it with touchstone and then i've you know w- was on mastermind tables with you leading as as the mentor um and then you know since then i mean i, I literally mastermind everything i've got a i've got a mindset mastermind i've got a business mastermind i've got obviously property masterminding kind of anything give, give it to me I, i'm just you know gagging to learn as much as i can um but how did you you know get into it so obviously you know you started by by getting educated so then how did your sort of journey progress into becoming a, a mentor and then moving on like that? Yeah, well, it was a really natural and also timely kind of progression. Um, I was going back to those early days when Chris and I had formed a business partnership and started in service accommodation with our eye on other things down the line. Um, this was under the, the mentorship of, of Paul and Anico. And after having been in the program, taking action for about a year, just over a year, we had actually reinvested to and do another year. But about halfway through that, the opportunity came to actually start to use our experience and knowledge to help others who might just be half a step or a step behind us. And interesting, before I had that opportunity, when we were in our uh, mentorship days meeting together and when we weren't sat down having our one-to-ones with, with Paul Anico, interesting, I naturally took to creating a mini mastermind table with the people who were networking because we weren't a big group at the time and so we'd have would have had our lunch or team coffee and sat down and because of the experience I'd taken from the software entrepreneurship world being in a mastermind I thought this is a valuable place to have these kind of conversations and start talking talking about progress, wins, challenges, and sharing ideas, even in short 10-minute blocks whilst we were waiting for our, our mentor sessions to, to happen or our keynote to happen. And so I actually had started hosting this just by volunteering or making the, the switch to actually hosting a table. And then came the actual uh, opportunity to look after a group of six delegates for a day and I guess start to find my feet in a style and an approach that I would feel best served that group. And obviously these things don't happen over like we're talking, you know, five years in, I think it's been about five years going on six years in the making um, and just really finding a natural joy and delight in doing it. And when people have asked me why, the, the simple way I found to explain it was that when I had discovered something that I could apply to my property business or personal development that I found was working, I felt like I was just bursting to share it with someone else.
you for a moment. Sam, we lost you for a moment. Can you, are you there? We lost you for a moment. Can you speak? I couldn't hear you for a moment. He's still there. Can you just speak, Sen? You're still there. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. For some reason, you're connection momentarily. Yeah, Sorry, your, folks. Yeah, your internet went, but don't worry. Carry on. We were we were engaged. So, <laughs> yes, my desire to want to help and serve others and help bring out the best in them just started to evolve over those five years, and. Whilst I wish these were my words, the best way I've heard that explained came from Tony Robbins. He said that when you when you choose to learn something new and apply it, you have an opportunity to grow. And when you grow, you have something to give. And when you give, i.e. help others, you, you find, a, I guess, a sense of meaning and purpose beyond yourself. And I think that's naturally what I've experienced and what I found a real joy in doing. And... <laughs> You know, from a selfish perspective, it keeps, it keeps me sharp, it keeps me learning, uh, and um, keeps me accountable. So it's a virtual, ongoing, reinforcing cycle. I love helping others progress, and in the act of doing so, keeping myself sharp and active. Because first and foremost, I'm an active property entrepreneur. That, that's what I do. Um, the master money mentoring side of things is a natural progression from that, uh, but something I, I dedicate an amount of days to each month and, and love doing. Um, so that's yeah, a bit of the story of how it started and and how it's evolved. Yeah, and, and so tell us, so obviously, um, you know, I understand and I met you uh, doing, you know, mentorship and, and, and masterminding around a table, and I, I know I understand that you're, you're carrying on with that. I think you have a, a couple of... Um, uh, I don't know openings each each year. Do you do you have an intake a couple of times a year or something? Um, is that what you do? Is it a couple of intakes a year that you take people on? Yeah. So the absolutely it, it is released in um, cohorts, if you will, capacity. Um, our our launch of this, I guess, next twelve month program is, is literally going to be going live as we speak any moment uh across this week and next week to i guess let let people be aware of the the support they can have on their on their growth if they're serious about um progressing to the next level the kind of people that we're that we're working with are not brand new beginners in property but those who have some experience they've invest in some education and they've applied that and actually got some results. So they're probably at least one year into their journey minimum and have at least a minimum of 1K of property profit coming in per month. So they've got some proven results, but all of the sticking problems of getting to the next level that one's experiencing is what Chris and I love to help people really accelerate their growth journey with. And so we'll be releasing opportunities to essentially apply for one of 12 spaces um so that's two tables of, of, of six people that, that chris up with each month for a full year long um with those applications available to uh i guess if the fit's right put an application in secure over the next few weeks so literally watch this space there'll be more announcements coming out we're at the very front end talk about today but we'll be able to then have our first group getting started most likely in june and run with them journey with them if you will for a full year with full day per month and uh weekly support on on, on zoom and the one that you experienced we are also um yeah can on, i um uh, can i just uh, say on that so obviously you had all this kind of masterminding and then this for me was a really big thing. You, the next thing I, I hear from you is, oh, we're, we're, we're wanting to do a retreat. And I kept hearing these retreats and other people doing it. Yeah. And and then I I attended and I can honestly say it was um, it was such a step change for me. And I tell you, the one thing that was the biggest step change is 
um, I, you know, I come from a family where, I, you know, I, I've not had a hard life, really. Uh, but we've always come from lack. You know, it's always, well, we can't afford that. And we can't afford that. And, you know, even if you could afford it, you just wouldn't. Because also you don't want to be, you know, buying something that looks like you've got too much. And I remember turning up at this place um, on the on the shores of a, of, of a you know, the beautiful lake and looking at this building and just being, and it was so funny, um, walking in and it was feeling like a child in the most beautiful surroundings, running around, looking at how, you know, lovely it was. And then we had, you know, meals made for us and and with the other incredible people and it completely changed my expectations it was kind of like this is this should be normal you know you can be and do things in a different way so yeah tell us a bit more how how the 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 retreats came about because yeah it was it was a massive step change for me um and I mean that amongst others but that that initial kind of being somewhere that's you know much more opulent not that I'm saying you have to be opulent but it just made me realize that you know you can have different different wants and it's not a bad thing it's oh just such a a joy music to my ears to hear how impactful the experience was for you because it was the the very first one that Chris and I launched and the conception the idea for it came way back in 2016, when Chris and I were discussing our our, our our projected future plans, I've never been great at looking out five years, ten years, long into the future. But one thing we were pretty clear on is that we felt a real draw to want to create amazing experiences in amazing places for great people who want to grow. And the mastermind format was the, I guess the the central piece to that. And then it was about identifying location and bringing together a great group of people. And then Chris and I hosting and coordinating, facilitating a weekend of structured discussion and workshopping to arrive at some end tangible plan that could then go and be executed on with all the right psychological conditions around it. So that first one that we did back in 2021 with you was a vision, an idea, a seedling of an idea from 2016 that finally we we delayed one year because of the whole COVID pandemic uh, lockdown situation, but we're able to launch it in that uh, September 2021 to just an, an outstanding success in our view and a wonderful experience for, for us and those who are with us and great memories from it and lifelong friendships. And great results as well that, that have, have come as the dividends of that planning and the execution that followed. And so then came the next year, so 2022, same again. Um, we learned, refined a few things and, again, delivered a similar form with a different group um, who, who are going through and sticking to their week team of their mass lines. We've essentially created for them a board of advisors that, that it's just so much much fun to initiate but then see to continue to, to grow so we will absolutely continue to have our annual mastermind retreat at the end of september i think this next one we're going to look to be targeting somewhere a bit warmer than uh, the lake district but um <laughs> again more, more news on that to be released uh soon but, but can i ask so what me, what yeah, made but, you sort of make that decision um, you know, because, you know, for, for everyone, this this is a conversation about sort of, you know, masterminding in general and, and what people can do. So as I say, I, I, I mastermind sort of absolutely everything. But that 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 sort of jump from, you know, all, you know, general people coming to a, a room or a hotel and meeting up and having sort of mentorship and training. And then this kind of step change into actually going you know, this is like going away, isn't it? It's like a, a yeah. one-off. It's like a, a you know a big pl- planning event inherently as well, wasn't it? So, what 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 made you jump to to that offering? Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's a major event. It's a big body of work to execute something like that, and a huge amount at the front end to identify the right people to to create this board of advisors for one another. But the reason for it is to absolutely 
get the very best out of each individual through an immersive gathering over over three days because it needs time away from one's business from the weeds of it it needs complete and utter almost closing out of the rest of the world to focus in on what's important for because this was a planning event this is a planning event for mapping out the year and the quarter ahead and so it's that gift to oneself like you experienced of okay you're sacrificing time from the family for a weekend or however many days during the week it might be and so you're thinking in your head trying to reconcile what what's the return on investment what's the payoff here well it's a gift to oneself to in the true sense of the word have a retreat in luxurious surroundings but more importantly to invest the kind of time strategically thinking on one's business rather than working in it and so it can't just be a quick one hour phone call it's an entire three days to be working on the business with the support of amazing people around you and the reason why it's in a nice location with great people and there's activities and meals is because we want to layer in very rich memories that it's fun for us to create that but it's a very rich experience for someone to take away with them and always anchor back to that vision for life that they create because we can link our our dreams and visions back to stories and pictures and, and strong memories like that rather than a two-dimensional say phone call or just a, a meeting room and when it comes bonds and friendships from where the understanding of one another's businesses and business plans can run so deep that the kind of support and cheerleaders you have for your business just couldn't happen if you're meeting someone on a 50 minute, 20 minute networking prior to a training day, but away with people for a full three days, bonds, friendships, potential business partnerships, and the level of accountability and support that comes from that are just another level. And underlying all of that is fun, Emma. We want to have fun in this journey, don't we? You know, we, we work hard, but fun is a massive ingredient of what I see as the other pillars of getting things done. Um, it's key to enjoy the journey. So that's another reason why it's in places, locations like this. And I can see now, because I always used to sort of think, oh, well, those sort of things aren't for me, because, you know, inherently they're generally, you know, a bit of a, a wedge of cash. And um, <clears throat> and as you say, that time, and if we all value our time, it's not just the money, is it? Isn't it? It's those days as well. Time away from your family. But what I've really noticed is that, yeah, so I, I have a monthly business mastermind and it's just, you know, a morning. And it is incredibly rare that I won't do that. I literally change holidays to not coincide with that yeah. morning because the benefit of just having those few hours where I force myself to go in, you you obviously you can't sit there on your phone. That would be incredibly rude and not supportive of the others. But I'm so committed um, myself to be there for others. And I have that expectation that they are there for me as well. And that's the same. I have an accountability group. It's every Tuesday, you know, nine o'clock. Um, you know, I have the expectation that I have to turn up for them. But likewise, I expect them to turn up for me. So, yeah, when when you're talking about, you know, having that chance to be away from things I think that is so incredibly key and it shows that commitment um from from sort of both sides so yeah I, th I think that was a, a, you know amazing but one thing I just wanted to add in there um going back to you know the, it being a you know quite a bit of money I mean for you Sen what what you do you're this epitome of of like these years of your own personal journey your own personal learning and you've kind of managed to just pull it all together and you remember everything and you draw it all together. And, you know, you just you've got some kind of experience of everything. Like even when we chat about our kids, in fact, I know we shouldn't compare, Sen, but I always feel like you're like this superstar parent. <laughs> Although, am I a good parent, Rosabella? Yeah, she said yes. That's OK. So we'll we'll be all right on that one. But one of the things 
that really showed in in doing these kind of masterminds, especially coming on 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 the retreat with you, is how much preparation you know you you would put yeah. into it, and how much you know every minute. Like you said, you you know there was there was fun. There was things like you know we'd partner off and we'd go off for walks together. Everything was kind of curated. You've taken absolutely everything of your life's learnings, I suppose, and kind of brought them together. And one of the things that still, I mean, gosh, there's so many, and you talk about rich memories, and I absolutely have have so many wonderful rich memories. But one of them is you asked us to choose a a bit of music to um i can't even remember what it was but what 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 you said but it was you know choose a bit of music that reflects you right now or what you want to achieve from it or something you know and mine was um i want it all and i want it now and i hear that a lot and every time like we do it just the the the, the rush comes back so yeah. you know yeah. in, inherently it's it's so multi-layered and so much work, Sen. What what made you? I mean, I know you've sort of touched on it, but but this is huge. This is not like just rocking up and and you know helping people. This this is like was it kind of to solidify your learnings as well? You know, it was so detailed what what you've done in 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 this kind of retreat and masterminding. You know, the the level of detail is is so massive. How did you come to that, or is that just you? Well, thank you for acknowledging all that. Um, how best to put this? There's multiple, I guess, things that, that come into it. One, I've mentioned that I feel like I've, I'm have i a product of all these things that I have consumed all these years. I wish a lot of this stuff was original work, but just like many, it's it typically not. It's passed down, but of course, I filter it through my own unique life's experience, but I take great pleasure in being able to be a vessel to pass it on to someone else who cares enough to actually apply it that, that that's incredibly um rewarding satisfying um but i guess to to create the experience it's something that i'm generally not the most creative person i can't have a blank piece of paper and just map out a new plan for things but but there's something about experience like that I can see in my head um I don't know if it's having grown up the youngest of four kids and quite a big family and wanting to be a bit of a people pleaser I see things I observe things I think about people uh, and I want to create magical memories for others so for my family or when I take a group of people away or work with them for a day and so I guess it just makes me visualize in advance of these things what might help layer in this extra bit of memory, taking into account sensory experiences, visual, auditory, um, things that we're actually doing. This last retreat room, we actually danced quite a lot. <laughs> um, all sorts of different things that um, really make it multidimensional because at the end of the day, it comes back to the fun. I like social environments where it's, good music, good people, good food, good drinks, lovely surroundings. And I guess it's something that I've been lucky enough to experience in my extended family. I love enjoying my family and I love creating in these mastermind environments. So yeah, I guess it's that I'm able to visualize it before we get there and actually think. And so then I'll make a note about it. I've always been a prolific note taker. The, the, these self journals I've been using for for years, I'll be screwing down notes. <laughs> Yeah, you do. I'll be screwing down notes every day when ideas pop in, memories, uh, reminders on the phone. And so while some stuff will get lost, some good stuff will get caught and I'll refer back to it. I do take notes and I do review notes. They're not just the, the never look at it again. Um, so I guess that helps pull it all together. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. And it is a really good reminder because I I used to, you know, when I was in my sort of heyday of uni and drinking days, you know, I thought I was quite a fun person and then kind of I got quite serious for a long time and I kind of still fun at times, I suppose, but I went very serious. And it was a great introduction back to remind me when we went on that retreat that, and especially after the 
two years of lockdown, yeah. you know, it got yeah. a lot of hard work, a lot of very serious. And it was suddenly like, you know, and I don't really drink either. And suddenly it was like, you know, a glass of champagne shoved in my hand. And it was suddenly like, Woo-hoo! this is, you know, there's, there's, there is fun as well. And I absolutely love that about you in the fact that, you know, you have to incorporate life as a whole, don't you? Um, and I think that's, uh, yeah, absolutely key. Wow, Sen. Well, as you know, you, you're you a, you're a great mucker of a uh, friend of mine. I think you're absolutely a tremendous person. Um, and, you know, as I say, I, I literally mastermind on everything and, um, you know, the, the, the introductions and the retreats that I've been on with you has, has, has really been amazing. So where can people find you if people wanted to come? I will put some links. I, as I say, I'm so sorry. This is a brand new format on Clubhouse and I, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, normally, I would have put a link up or something like that. So, but we will, this will go on to, um, uh, it will go on to YouTube. Um, so we will put some links up there. Uh, but if people just wanted to come and find you, where where might they find you, Sen? So uh, a number of different places, or my, my social media channels. So um, Devnier Plus on Instagram, uh, just my name on Facebook. Um, I post some sort of blog several times a week. Um, I love, as I said, love sharing the things I've read that have impacted me. And uh, occasionally I'm able to come up with something original, but most of the time I'm uh, <laughs> I'm taking things I've read and learned from other people and sharing it with uh, the world. So on Facebook, there's weekly posts I'm sharing. Um, I think I've put, given uh, you a link to our website, the Devonier Plus the Code UK website, and to um, our scorecard, which is the Execution Powerhouse scorecard. This is a really great tool that um, I've created to help people discover their own ability to execute their property goals. Going back to what we, you probably got a sense, everyone listening, that I'm all about the execution because without that, you don't get the results. But we just want to make that journey of executing as fun and as certain and as stress-free as possible. So. This little tool I've created is to help people identify their current ability to execute the property goals. And so wherever that may be, there's no right or wrong to it. You will get a score and get a bespoke insights report that you're able to go through to give you tips and guidance on how you can improve that score and therefore execute more of what you want to create more of the life you want through property. So that's a really great tool for people to use. And off the back of that, there's then an opportunity for those who are curious, interested, and actually genuinely serious about investing in mastermind support for the next year ahead. They can inquire about it, have a discovery call with myself or with Chris to understand what is it, how does it work, and is the fit appropriate before potentially considering an application. So there's that opportunity as well. Um, Otherwise, people can also, if they just want to read a bit more, they can read the book. Um, I've written Predictable Property Profits. Um, so this is all about getting more certainty in your property deals based on our hard-learned lessons. We put it into four simple steps. And yeah, that's quite simply $9.99 on, on uh, Amazon. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, Sen, I think we've done incredibly well, knowing how well we can both yabber away. Um, we've managed to to keep it to the hour and yeah, really, really appreciate you coming on and, and spending your time and um, sharing, yeah, all about masterminding, which is something that I am so passionate about. And I know it's not necessarily a, a normal topic. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to go and do that one because I want to share, you know, my experiences and how it's, you know, literally shaped me. Clearly it shaped you. Um, and there's, I know that you have shaped so many people. And in fact, Helen has said, good to see see you again Sen and um, yeah she she will come back and listen again to to this too so brilliant okay Sen well so what we'll do is um, yeah we'll come to a close now but again thank you thank thank you Um, really appreciate your uh, time with us and um, oh and I want to say come here a big thank you to Rosabella who's still on holiday Rosabella who has been what? so patient haven't you you've been such a good girl what a thank brilliant you. girl you are <laughs> okay guys take care enjoy the conversation Rosabella exactly. thank you so much Emma pleasure being here alright take care see you all soon bye bye